Hi, I'm Elizabeth and today I'm here with another weekly reading video. As you can probably tell, I'm not at home. I am on holiday and I'm very much enjoying myself. I've been reading a lot this week, doing a lot of reading in parks, which is one of my favourite activities. So very happy with my holiday so far. Um, I brought three books with me from home and I finished two of them. And I have almost finished the third, so I thought I would tell you a bit about them. The first one I finished was Planet Fall by Emma Newman. This is a sci-fi set in, uh, well, on a different planet where a small colony of humans have made their living, or made their colony, I guess is the right word. Um, and at the beginning of this book, a new person approaches this colony and uh, threatens to um, upset the status quo because it turns out that this colony is built on a secret and this secret is sort of gradually revealed throughout the novel. And uh, yeah, I really like this, uh, partly because I felt it was an intense and exciting read, suspenseful, sort of. Um, the secret kept me wanting to read more and more and not wanting to put the book down. I mean, you get the main gist of the secret pretty early on, but you didn't really get the whole part of the story until the end. So yeah, that made it into somewhat of a page turner for me. Although I will say that there were times where I thought that the secret was mentioned a bit too many times, maybe, but that's a minor detail. I, I really enjoyed the story in this. But more than that, I really enjoyed the main character in this story, because uh, we follow a woman called Ren, short for Renata, and she is a brilliant woman, she's very smart, she is very good at her job, which is in being an engineering, an engineer, and also a geneticist, and yeah, she, she's very clever, but she is struggling with some major mental health problems. And I found it very refreshing to read a sci-fi book where the main character is not this brash, brave person who can make anything happen, but rather a very solid, capable person, but who is maybe more on the anxious side than on the brave side. So. In the end, I really enjoyed this book and I will look out for more in this series. And then the second book I finished was Proust and the Squid by Marianne Wolf. I'm looking at the name because I've said it wrong twice already. Um, this is a non-fiction book about reading and about what happens in the brain when we are reading and how reading has changed the human brain and how it keeps changing the human brain. And uh, it was super fascinating to read. Uh, it's divided into three parts where the first part deal with how humans came to reading as a species, which is, you know, closely linked to how humans came to writing. And if you follow this channel for any amount of time, you might know that I have a fascination for writing systems, so that was a good start for me. And then the second part of the book is about how individual humans come to reading, so it's about reading acquisition in children. And then the third part of the novel is about when... the novel? It's not a novel. The, the third part of the book is about uh, how... Uh, what happens when reading acquisition does not work as it should, uh, that is, it deals with people with dyslexia. And um, yeah, as I said, this was super fascinating and I learned a lot from this. I will say, however, that it is on the denser side of nonfiction. Uh, it is written for a general audience, but it still has a fairly academic language and it also goes into a lot of technical detail uh, when it comes to neuroscience, which, you know, is not my field and I did struggle to keep up at times with 
all the words for different parts of the brains and stuff such. So it's not an easy read, but if you're interested in the topic, uh, it is definitely worth it because it was well researched and um, with a lot of interesting information. So I really did enjoy reading this, even though it took me a time a while, just because, as I said, it was pretty dense. And then the third novel I brought with me from home, or the third book even, it is a novel, was Landlocked by Doris Lessing because I was really enjoying reacquainting myself with Martha Quest when I read A Proper Marriage a few weeks ago and I just wanted to move on with the series so this is the fourth book in the same series. In this book we follow Martha when the Second World War ends and she is somewhat disillusioned. She no longer runs around uh, doing politics. Uh, this is a much calmer book than the others uh, and much more like, yeah, I would say more like The Golden Notebook um, than the first three novels. They are more straightforward novels, whereas this is a bit more fragmentary and more into exploring ideas and emotions and like moods than about story and really progressing very much. Um, here Martha is mainly just waiting. She has this feeling of waiting for her life to begin and it, the whole book has a sort of languid mood might just be me because I've been reading it in the sun in parks and I was feeling quite languid myself but I don't think so I think it's also a very big part of this novel uh, and yeah, it, it's got this mood of just waiting about waiting for your life to begin waiting for something to happen um, trying to make sense of what's going on around you which, I mean, at this time was an extreme situation to be in because there had been war going on for five years and people were just starting to realize the immensity of loss in the sense of human lives. And then this is told from a, a setting that is far away from the actual action where they weren't affected as much, where this is set in southern Rhodesia and you know the the way they were affected by the war was that a lot of uh, pilots were training there so there were a lot of military young men uh, living around this town uh, but I mean they have enough food there was never any actual war going on in her setting but still the war affected them <clears throat> in a great way. So I think I, I still have like 60 pages left of this before I finish but I think this is my second favorite Lessing novel so far after The Golden Notebook of course but yeah I'm really really enjoying this and I think I'm probably gonna finish this off today. And then you know me being me I've been here for six days now. I have managed to acquire some books so I thought I should just end this with a little book haul to show you what I've gotten so far. Uh, this is also a tentative TBR because when I finished the gold, uh, not the golden notebook but landlocked, uh, this is what I have to choose from to read. Uh, so I bought this one which is called uh, Cities of the Classical World, an atlas and gazetteer of 120 centers of ancient civilization by Colin McEverdy, edited by Douglas S. Oles. So yeah, this is what it says on the cover. It is basically just a listing of ancient cities and uh, it sounded very interesting to me. I have read the introduction and I've read the, the parts about the first two cities. They are in alphabetical order. So I don't think this is a book I'm going to sit down and read from cover to cover. I think that will be a bit too much. But I am planning to read it. Well, I am planning to read it cover to cover. I'm just planning to take my time with it because uh, reading this like in 
few days would be too much. But I'm really looking forward to getting to know more about all of these ancient cities, some of which I know some stuff about, and others I know nothing about. Not even the name. And then, uh, you know, I bought the one book I said I would buy. I bought Kudos by Rachel Cusk. I have also started it, this. I'm about 80 pages into it. I don't really have all that much to say about it but because it is just more of the same from the previous books. I will say that maybe I'm starting to get enough of this by now, so I think it's a good thing it's a trilogy and not more books than that. Uh, I still like the writing style, there's still a lot of stuff that makes me think, which is what I like about these books. But also there's still nothing happening in uh, the sense of plot. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is gonna be the next book I finish because I have already started it. So when I'm finishing off Landlocked, uh, I, I just didn't want to bring Landlocked with me yesterday. I went to Cambridge and uh, I didn't think I had enough of it left to last me a day. So I brought a new book instead. But yeah, this is... Uh, my next read, or also currently reading, I suppose. Then I also bought uh, Motherhood by Sheila Hete, which I've heard a lot of things about. Um, and I think this is going to be a book that I like. Um, it is about, you know, motherhood. The title kind of gives it away. Uh, but it, it's a woman who is approaching the time where she has to make the choice whether she wants to be a mother or not before it's not going to be biologically possible for her anymore and uh, well i'm not a mother myself i am at that age myself uh, and uh, it's a topic that interests me so i'm thinking i'm gonna enjoy this uh, then yeah, yesterday as i said i went to cambridge and uh, i was at the Cambridge University Press bookshop and I wanted to buy just about every book in the linguistic section there. You know, academic books are fairly expensive and also I didn't want to carry them around with me all day so I did actually limit myself to one book. So I bought uh, The Language Myth, Why Language is Not an Instinct by Vivian Evans. and. Uh, from what I gathered, this uh, is uh, trying to explain why Noam Chomsky is wrong. And, well, not just him, but he was the one who started it by talking about language instinct. And uh, I've always been um, less than enthusiastic about that theory. So I am uh, very eager to read something uh, from someone else who uh, is that, who probably have more... Uh, proof of why uh, than I do. And then the last book I bought uh, so far is Near to the Wild Heart by Clarice Lispector. I mean, um, Celia has been raving about her as well as Mark Nash and they have made me curious and I decided to start at the beginning with her debut novel. So this is that. And uh, yeah, I also did buy one more thing uh, yesterday. Things falling out all over the place. But I did buy the magazine Oh Comely because I've uh, heard a lot of British booktubers uh, be fond of this magazine. So I was curious and wanted to have a look. So when I saw it, I grabbed a copy and we'll see what I think about that as well. Yeah, so I think that was all for me for today. Now I'm going to go out in the sun and find myself a park and finish off landlocked, I think. That's the plan. And uh, I hope you're having a good week as well and that you're reading all of the books. And if you have something you want to recommend me, please do so in the comments below. And I will see you next week. Bye bye.